welcome to episode 77 of the Giants of the Faith podcast. My name is Robert Daniels and I'm the host of this show where we look back at Christians from the past that have made an impact for the kingdom of God. Today we're looking at the life of Scottish missionary John Patton. John Gibson Patton was born on May 24, 1824 in Kirkmahoe, Dumfrieshire, Scotland to parents James, a stocking maker, and Janet Patton. John was the oldest of 11 siblings, and he grew up in a devout Christian family, deeply influenced by the teachings of the Presbyterian Church of Scotland. In fact, at one point, his father James was a coal porter, or someone that rides around the countryside selling religious books and pamphlets. This religious upbringing played a significant role in shaping Patton's worldview and later inspiring his missionary endeavors. As a boy, John worked in his father's stocking business. He worked long days, up to 14 hours, assisting his father in learning the trade. But, not content as a stocking boy, John also devoted himself to study during the break times that he was given for meals and in the evenings. And from a young age, Patton showed a strong interest in missions and evangelism. He was particularly inspired by the stories of missionaries like David Livingston, who ventured into distant lands to spread the Christian faith. This early fascination with missionary work planted the seeds for Patton's future calling. Patton received his education at the University of Glasgow, where he studied theology and prepared himself for a life of ministry. During his studies, he became increasingly passionate about the idea of taking the gospel to those who had never heard it before, especially in far-flung regions of the world. After completing his education, Patton began his career as a missionary by serving in the Glasgow City Mission, where he worked among the urban poor, providing spiritual guidance and practical assistance to those in need. This experience deepened his commitment to social justice efforts and reinforced his desire to serve as a missionary abroad. 1858 was a momentous year for Patton. On March 23rd, he was ordained in the Reformed Presbyterian Church, A little over a week later, on April 2nd, he was married to Mary Ann Robinson. And then two weeks later, on April 16th, Patton and his wife embarked on his most famous mission to the New Hebrides, where he would spend the next four decades of his life. Patton was the second missionary from the Reformed Presbyterian Church after John Inglis before him. This decision marked the beginning of a remarkable journey filled with challenges, triumphs, and enduring impact on the lives of the islanders. The New Hebrides are a group of islands in the South Pacific, about as far from Scotland as one can get, and they were jointly ruled by both England and France. And today, they're the independent Republic of Vanuatu. And they were known for their hostile and often violent indigenous population. The natives practiced cannibalism, and were very resistant to outside influences. But despite the dangers, Patton was undeterred in his mission. He worked tirelessly to learn the languages and cultures of the islanders, often facing hostility and danger from those who opposed his presence. Patton's approach to missionary work emphasized building relationships with the islanders, demonstrating compassion, and living among them as a friend and neighbor. In 1859, his wife Mary Ann and newborn son tragically died within a few months of each other due to tropical diseases. Patton buried his family near his home and spent many nights sleeping on their grave in order to protect their bodies from the cannibal tribes. Despite this devastating loss, Patton remained committed to his mission and continued his work among the islanders. By 1862, Patton realized he needed reinforcements, so he returned to Scotland by way of Australia in order to raise awareness, funds, and to recruit missionary helpers. His goal was to raise enough money to build a ship that would be used to assist in the travel amongst the islands that was required by the type of missionary work that he did. And while fundraising, he found time to woo and marry Margaret Whitecross in June of 1864. Finally, in 1866, Patton and wife number two left Scotland for New Hebrides. They set up base on the island of Aniwa, and God used a well to bring the local people to Christ. The Aniwans lacked a source of fresh water and relied on rain collection to survive. A patent told them that he would dig a well to provide water, and they laughed at him, like they laughed at the Bible stories that he told them. 
but he dug anyway, and after much prayer, thirty feet down he struck fresh water. The people were amazed that Patton's god could produce rain from underground, and they were moved to destroy their idols and to listen with a new purpose to what Patton had to say. It took three long years of work, but Patton finally made his first converts. He wrote in his autobiography, For three years we had toiled and prayed and taught for this. At this moment, when I put the bread and wine into those dark hands, once stained with the blood of cannibalism, but now stretched out to receive and partake the emblems and seals of the Redeemer's love, I had a foretaste of the joy of glory that well nigh broke my heart to pieces. I shall never taste a deeper bliss till I gaze on the glorified face of Jesus himself. Over the years, Patton faced numerous challenges, including threats to his life, but he persevered, eventually seeing significant success in his efforts. He established churches, schools, and medical facilities, and he played a key role in ending the practices of cannibalism and infanticide that were common among the islanders. Patton's missionary work in the New Hebrides had a lasting impact, with many islanders converting to Christianity and the establishment of a strong Christian presence in the region. Now, during his later years, Patton dedicated himself to writing and speaking about his missionary experiences. His autobiography, the Autobiography of John G. Patton, was published in 1889 and became a bestseller and inspired many with its tales of faith, perseverance, and adventure in the South Pacific. After spending many years in the New Hebrides, he returned to Scotland in 1892. In his autobiography, Patton recounts several instances where he was protected by divine intervention or angels during his missionary work. The most famous and dramatic account from Patton's memoir describes an occasion when a tribe of natives surrounded his house, intending to kill him. Patton and his wife prayed fervently for protection, and during the night, the assailants inexplicably left, never to return. A year or so later, the chief of that tribe converted to Christianity, and when Patton questioned him about that night, the chief said that they'd seen many men with swords walking around Patton's house. The tribe didn't know where these men with the swords had come from, but they knew they'd better flee. And to me, it's very reminiscent of the army of angels and their chariots of fire that the prophet Elisha saw surrounding Dothan and protecting him from the Arameans. If you're not familiar with that story, you can read about it in 2 Kings chapter 6. Back in Scotland, Patton remained active in missionary societies and organizations, advocating for missions and raising support for other missionaries in their endeavors around the world. He continued to travel and speak extensively, sharing his stories and promoting the cause of Christian missions wherever he could. In addition to his missionary activities, Patton was also involved in various humanitarian efforts. He supported education and healthcare initiatives in the South Pacific Islands, and he worked to improve the lives of islanders that he had served during his years as a missionary. In 1899, the New Testament was translated and published in the Anaiwan language. Inspired by Patton's tireless work, other missionaries spread throughout the islands of the New Hebrides and continued to preach the gospel to previously unreached people. John Patton passed away on January 28, 1907, at the age of 82. His legacy as a pioneering missionary and an advocate for the people of the South Pacific Islands continues to be remembered and celebrated. Throughout his writings and his example, he's inspired generations of Christians to dedicate their lives to spreading the gospel and serving others. And that's it for this episode. Thanks very much for listening. Until next time, God bless. <laughs>